The NTSB's preliminary report on UPS 2976 has just been released, and the findings are far more shocking than what we expected. The new evidence shows a structural failure so sudden, so violent, and so physically extreme that it redefines what we thought this accident was. Let's break it down. The preliminary report confirms that UPS 2976 began its takeoff roll on runway 17 right at Louisville, with every indication of a standard departure. Checklists were completed, briefings were conducted, the cockpit voice recorder showed no sign of trouble, stress, or technical warnings. Nothing suggested that the aircraft was about to experience one of the most catastrophic structural failures ever captured on airport surveillance. The NTSB released a sequence of still frames from a fixed camera position, and these images have quickly become the center of the entire investigation. They reveal exactly when the situation transitioned from routine to irreversible. In frame one, the MD-11 is beginning rotation. The aircraft posture is exactly what you would expect from a heavy freighter on departure. The engine nacelles appear clean, there is no visible fire, no visible failure, and no smoke. Nothing in this first frame suggests that the number one engine is about to break away from the aircraft. And that is where the shock begins. As rotation continues, the number one engine begins to bend upward relative to the wing. This is not an aerodynamic effect and it's not wake turbulence. It is the earliest visual indication that the pylon's aft mount, one of the most critical attachment points on the aircraft, has already failed or is in the process of failing. In frame two, the engine is no longer aligned with the wing at all. It is lifting away upwards, not sideways or downward. That upward motion is the first clue that the structural failure occurred at the aft mount. If the forward mount had failed first, the engine would pitch downward. The fact that it pitched upward aligns exactly with what the metallurgical analysis found later. In frame three, the engine clears the wing entirely. It is now above the pylon line, and according to the NTSB, it was producing thrust when this separation occurred. The engine is essentially pulling itself upward like a lever, driven not by explosive force, but by thrust vectoring and gyroscopic precession acting through the rotating fan. This is one of the most shocking aspects of the report. The photos show an engine behaving exactly the way engineers warn it will behave if the aft mount breaks under rotational load, it moves up, twists right, and departs over the wing. In frames four and five, the engine continues this arc over the fuselage. The NTSB confirmed the engine ultimately landed on the right side of the runway, another sign of the intense twisting forces. The public rarely sees such extreme examples of engine gyroscopic behavior documented so clearly. The next shock is what happened to the aircraft at this exact moment. When the number one engine detached, debris entered the number two engine, located at the base of the vertical stabilizer. Flame bursts visible in frame six are consistent with compressor stalls in the tail engine. The NTSB confirmed this. The number two engine was not the primary failure, but it was affected by debris from engine one. This means that in just a few seconds, UPS 2976 went from a three engine takeoff to one fully functioning engine, the number three engine on the right wing. Losing one engine is a trained scenario. Losing two during rotation at 30 feet above the runway is unrecoverable. The preliminary report confirms the aircraft never climbed higher than 30 feet AGL, despite ADS-B data initially suggesting otherwise. With only one engine producing stable thrust, the MD-11 simply did not have the performance needed to climb. The crew countered the initial roll, leveled the wings, and continued flying the aircraft. But physics made the outcome inevitable. This sequence alone is enough to shock even seasoned analysts but the metallurgy and structural findings go even further. The preliminary report's structural analysis is the single most alarming portion of the document. The NTSB recovered both the aft and forward lugs from the number one engine pylon, along with the spherical bearing and wing clevis. Once cleaned and examined, the fracture surfaces told an unmistakable story. The aft lug had pre-existing fatigue cracks on both sides, both the inboard and outboard surfaces. Not overstress, not a one-time overload. Fatigue. This means the pylon mount was weakening long before the accident. In addition, the forward lug showed fatigue cracking only on its inboard side. 
The four lugs outboard side failed purely from overstress after the aft lug let go. These findings match the CCTV footage exactly. The aft mount failed first. The engine pitched up because the forward mount briefly held. The forward mount then overstressed and tore away. The engine, still producing thrust, climbed over the wing and fuselage. The level of correlation between photos, physics, and fracture surfaces is extremely rare in preliminary reports. It provides almost a complete mechanical timeline. Another shocking detail, the spherical bearing's outer race was fractured circumferentially, indicating major instability inside the joint. This type of damage can occur when a bearing operates with excessive play or when the mount has experienced repetitive abnormal loads. Investigators cannot yet determine whether bearing play caused the fatigue or whether the fatigue created the play, but the fact that the spherical bearing and both lugs failed in a linked sequence is significant. It's important to emphasize, the NTSB is not blaming maintenance at this stage, but the report does show a lubrication task was completed only weeks earlier. A detailed visual inspection was last done in 2021. A special detailed inspection designed to detect cracks like these was not yet due. However, the fact remains. Fatigue cracks developed in a critical mount well before its next scheduled inspection interval. This raises questions about whether aging MD-11 and DC-10 fleets require updated inspection limits or additional non-destructive testing methods. Again, no fault is assigned in a preliminary report, but the implications are serious. And there's one more major shock from the metallurgy. Parts of the aft and forward lugs were found near the runway. This means the failure occurred at or just before rotation, fully consistent with the visible upward motion of the engine. When you combine these elements, fatigue, cracks, bearing damage, overstress on the forward lug, and the engine's upward trajectory, the picture becomes clear. This was a structural failure inside the pylon itself, not an engine failure. For many viewers, this is the most shocking conclusion of the preliminary report. There is a natural tendency among aviation enthusiasts to ask, could a different technique have saved the aircraft? The preliminary report makes that answer painfully clear. The airplane had only one fully functioning engine immediately after rotation. The MD-11 is not certified for takeoff with one engine inoperative because no commercial aircraft of this size is. The performance charts assume either all engines producing thrust or one engine loss after reaching a safe altitude with sufficient climb performance. UPS-2976 lost two engines, one completely, one partially, before crossing 30 feet. The left wing fire seen in the images began almost immediately after separation. That fire was not from fuel tanks rupturing, but from fuel lines and hydraulic systems torn open when the pylon and pylon attachments ripped through the wing structure. With only the number three engine producing consistent thrust, the aircraft yawed and rolled sharply left. The pilots corrected it according to the images, which shows they were actively controlling the aircraft. But the loss of thrust on the left side combined with the graded thrust on the tail engine made sustained flight impossible. The aircraft cleared the blast fence, confirming that the pilots maintained some degree of lift, but then struck a warehouse with the left landing gear. At this point, the sequence became unrecoverable. There is an important point the preliminary report reinforces. There's no evidence the crew made any mistake during the takeoff roll or initial rotation. The failure mode would have been unsurvivable in any simulator profile, any training scenario, or any test condition. Given the fatigue cracking found in the aft mount, the accident was triggered not by pilot action, but by a structural component failing at the exact worst moment in flight. The preliminary report makes one fact absolutely clear. UPS 2976 did not crash because of an engine fire, surge, or internal failure. The core issue was a hidden structural weakness inside the number one pylon's aft mount, specifically fatigue cracking that developed long before takeoff. When those cracks finally propagated during rotation, the mount failed, the engine separated upward, and the sequence of events became aerodynamically unrecoverable within seconds. This failure mode is shocking for several reasons. It happened at the worst possible moment. It compromised not only one engine, but two, and it involved a single point structural element that is not supposed to break under rotation loads, even on an aging airframe. 
the circumferential fracture of the spherical bearing, the fatigue cracks on both sides of the aft lug, and the overstress tearing through the forward lug all confirm the same chain. A progressive weakening that went unnoticed until it caused a complete structural release. For the crew, there was no available technique or emergency procedure that could have overcome the combination of lost thrust, asymmetric roll, and insufficient altitude. The images showing the pilots momentarily leveling the wings demonstrate they were actively fighting for control, but physics left them no margin. Their professionalism deserves recognition, and our thoughts remain with them, their families, and the people on the ground who were affected. What comes next is straightforward. Investigators will finish their lab work on the pylon assembly examining the fractured lugs, the spherical bearing, and any deformation in the surrounding hardware. They'll also verify whether the current inspection intervals for these aging MD-11 and DC-10 fleets still make sense. It won't be fast, but for now, the industry already understands why the NTSB grounded the fleet for inspection. A structural attachment point should never represent a single, catastrophic mode of failure on a transport category aircraft. Even at the preliminary stage, the message is unmistakable. These pylons endure enormous loads over tens of thousands of cycles, and this accident shows how a weakening part can remain invisible until the moment it fails. The findings are more alarming than anyone expected, and this tragedy may have been preventable. That's for now. We'll be back to this case when more updates are released. Thank you for watching. Fly safe.